A very good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us. The time is uh, exactly 3 p.m. We will start in one minute uh, exactly. I'm just waiting for a few more people to join in. Thank you. Very good afternoon, ladies and ge gentlemen. Thank you for joining us once again. Uh, welcome to the Brand USA webinar 3.0. It gives me great pleasure to partner once again with Brand USA as Travel Biz Monitor in this series of webinars. I'm sure by now, uh, as you know, the webinars are aimed at keeping you updated on all the latest information on the various destinations that Brand USA has to offer. Uh, this obviously is in preparation for what we feel will be a, a very good next travel se season. We hope uh, that we're going to get out of this uh, crazy situation very, very soon and the travel will, will resume. In the meanwhile, we're doing all we can uh, to keep you updated with information to be able to market the destination brand USA very, very well. Uh, I'm sure your clients will benefit from this. And, uh, and again, thank you very much for joining us in large no uh, numbers. I'd like to introduce uh, my speakers for today. But just, just before that, I have a few notes that I'd like you to pay attention to. At all times, uh, all attendees, please keep your mics and your webcams off. Our viewers who have joined using their phones, please use the landscape mode or the horizontal mode for a better view. Also, you could activate your desktop site option by going to the browser settings for a better view. But if you want to use your phone, please feel free. The Q&A option, uh, which is available, like you, you would see a Q&A option in front of you. That's your option to talk to all the, all the presenters and ask them questions on whatever you'd like to ask. A lot of our, our presenters will try and answer you in real time if they can. If they do not have the answers to those questions at that time, they will take this offline and then send their answers to you when, whenever they can, as soon as possible. We also have some interesting polls which will pop up uh, on, on the command of our presenters. We'd encourage you to take part in those polls because it will give us a lot of feedback on what you or your clients want out of these destinations. At any point of time, if you feel that your audio is getting mixed up due to low internet connection, or any technical glitch, please feel free to simply refresh your page and you'll be back to where you started. Also keep uh, the email with your webinar link and your joining uh, ID handy with you so you can click on that link at any, any time you want. As in when we play the video, some of you may see a continue or audio button. Please press that button if it pops up and that also means that your, your connection is fine. Uh, I would now like to introduce our speakers for today. Uh, we have four of them who are going to be actually concentrating on various destinations. We first has we first have Ms. Bhavika Zariwala. She's the Director of Travel Trade India Brand USA. Next, we have Christina Colney, the Account Director India for Visit California. We have the Dira Mazumdar Mitra. Senior Account Manager of Philadelphia Convention and Visitors Bureau. And last but not the least, we have Kaveri Kathuria, Assistant Manager Marketing for India, Mam Mammoth Lakes Tourism. 
Uh, with this introduction, I'd like to pass this on to Bhavika, who will take this forward and brief us about the agenda for this web webinar. Bhavika, uh, it's over to you. Thank you so much, Sheldon, for the introduction. Uh, so guys, we have a very simple agenda today. Uh, first of all, a very good afternoon to all of you. Thank you very much for joining us and making our webinar super successful with every webinar that we do. Uh, I'm Bhavika with Brand USA and I'm based in Mumbai. Uh, so this is our third webinar that we are doing in our Discover USA webinar series. And the objective of today's uh, webinar is to help you expand your current portfolio of USA products to include new experiences, itineraries, as well as destinations. So we're going to begin the presentation uh, with Utah in the West, uh, followed by California and Mammoth Lakes in the Pacific West, ending with Philadelphia on the Northeast Coast. So as you know, Brand USA is the official uh, tourism board for the United States. Uh, we work in close partnership with the travel industry to really maximize the economic and social benefits of travel. Um, we promote all 50 states, five union territories, as well as the District of Columbia. So here's a map overview uh, to give you an idea of the destinations that we are covering today. So as you see, Utah is located in the west, uh, California is on the Pacific uh, West Coast, and Philadelphia is located very close to New York on the uh, East Coast. So let's transfer to the USA now by flying into Salt Lake City, uh, which is the main gateway uh, airport in Utah State. So welcome to the state of Utah. Utah is located in the US Rocky Mountains in the West, as you see on the screen, uh, marked in orange. We are bordered by Wyoming and Idaho State in the North, Colorado in the East, and Arizona in the South. Nevada is conveniently located in the West, and Las Vegas is really a major gateway to Southern Utah, as it takes only three hours uh, to drive from Las Vegas to Zion Canyon National Park. Uh, Utah is also a very easy add-on to your existing West Coast products, uh, and also can be sold as a standalone self-drive destination uh, for adventure travel or for families. Uh, Utah is the 13th largest state in the USA, and it's home to five national parks, 44 state parks, uh, national monuments, and one tribal park. Uh, the capital city of Utah is Salt Lake City, which is also the largest gateway airport in the state of Utah, as well as it's the gateway to Yellowstone National Park. So talking more about Salt Lake City Airport, it has been completely rebuilt uh, with a spend of $3.6 billion and it's scheduled to open in September 2020. So we've not renovated, but, but we've rebuilt the entire facility to allow more international flights, larger planes. We have 300 new gates and quicker pickup and access. Uh, this is also one of the largest infrastructure projects in the nation. The best part about flying into Salt Lake City Airport is that you're only 15 minutes away, 1-5, uh, to downtown or the city center. And a lot of hotels offer free shuttle services from the airport to the hotel as the distance is very short. Uh, you can reach the downtown area also by the airport taxi, Uber, or Lyft. Uh, Salt Lake City also has a light rail system for public transportation, which is very cheap and affordable and easy to use. It's called TRAX. Uh, TRAX stands for Transit uh, Express. It takes about 15 minutes uh, by TRAX and is $2.5 one way. Also, the good thing about uh, Salt Lake City Airport's location, it's, it's, it's just ten, uh, like an hour's drive away to 10 various ski resorts within the state. So Salt Lake City is a very unique city where urban life meets the snow-covered mountains like you see in the image. And because of the proximity uh, to the mountains, Salt Lake City is home to Ski City, uh, which includes four ski resorts within, within 35 minutes uh, from the city area. Utah is home to some of the most diverse landscapes in the world and is also called Red Rock Country, uh, as you see on the screen. Uh, Utah's national parks feature some of the most astonishing landscapes in the world that are only unique to Utah. You cannot find them anywhere else in the world. I will now take you through the mighty five national parks in Utah. 
Uh, but before I do that, uh, you have to see it to believe it. So let's show you a visual of the Mighty Five before we deep dive into each uh, park. Picture this, your next trip, Utah, five national parks. First, Zion. You're walking, the ground rises, the ground drops, the ground becomes water. Next, Bryce. You're riding a mule. You're riding a mule under giant orange drip castles. You are not dreaming. You will not forget this. On to Capitol Reef. Take the scenic route, the really scenic route. Take a path you've never taken and see the stars for the first time. Now for Canyon Lands. You're riding a bike. You're riding a bike on Mars. Now you're riding the rapids. Class two, class three, class four, classic. Arches, 5.32 a.m. Some things are worth racing the sunrise for. The horizon lightens. You round the corner. Whoa. This is life elevated. The Mighty Five. Five iconic parks, one epic experience. Plan your trip at visitutah.com. So we're going to begin with the first park, which is Aachi's National Park. Uh, it's one of the top national parks in the United States and is a four hour drive away from Salt Lake City. Uh, the closest city is Moab, uh, which can be a base for exploring Aachi's and it has various budget mid-range as well as luxury accommodation options available. Moab is also connected by air um, through SkyWest and United Flights. Um, the entrance to Aachi's National Park is about 10 minutes away from Moab. And one experience that you should really not miss here is seeing the sunrise at the delicate arch, as you see in the image. Uh, some of the activities here include camping, hiking, stargazing, photography tours because of the very beautiful landscape. And you can also opt for guided tours, which explore the most popular destinations in the park, which have taken millions of years to form. And you can learn about how they were formed. Also, a lot of Hollywood movies have been shot in this national park, and you may recognize the landscape from the movies uh, Hulk and Indiana Jones. Next is the Canyonlands uh, National Park, which is 30 minutes drive from Moab. Uh, Moab is also home to a variety of uh, hotels and lodges, like the Red Cliffs Lodge, where you can experience rustic comfort, or the Sorel River Ranch and Spa for a luxury ranch experience. This park offers a wide range of outdoor activities, including really iconic hiking in the Red Rock country. There's a slogan in this park which says that half the park is after dark. So travelers from all over the world visit the Canyonlands for stargazing, as Canyonlands is a gold tier certified international dark sky park by night. Activities in this park include camping, hiking, backpacking, and rafting. Uh, you can venture down the adventurous Cataract Canyon with its Class 5 rapids or relax as you float on calm waters, taking the views of the impressive cliff sides. You can also book a trip with a local guide uh, to visit the must-see uh, destinations and learn about the park's interesting pa past. So just to recap, Moab is four hours away from Salt Lake City, and it's the perfect place to explore uh, Canyonlands National Park as well as Archie's National Park. We're now moving towards the south with the Capitol Reef National Park. So this is two hours drive away from Moab in the south. Uh, accommodation options here include the Capitol Reef Resort, which is just outside the park, and guests can rent comfortable uh, rooms or cabins. Other places available for accommodation are the Lodge at the Red River Ranch and the Red Sands Hotel and Spa for luxury options. This park is located in southern Utah and has a diversity of landscape like no other area in the state. Imagine red rocks and canyons combined with lush green meadows and alpine forests. Some of the activities here uh, include hiking, biking, horseback riding, adventurous ATV tours, hunting, fishing, or wildlife viewing. You can really, if you're lucky, uh, spot wildlife while enjoying a quiet picnic lunch. 
There's also the Capital Reef Scenic Drive. Uh, so anyone who's not into adventure can drive down the 25 mile uh, scenic drive uh, and stop at breathtaking viewpoints and click images for their social media as well. The fourth park is the Bryce Canyon, which is, an, uh, which is at an elevation of 9,000 feet above sea level. Uh, this is also located in Southern Utah. Uh, the beauty about the location of this park is that it's four hours drive away both from Salt Lake City as well as Las Vegas. Bryce is unique and is known to have the maximum number of rock pillars called hoodos, as you see in the image. So these hoodos have formed over millions of years uh, by water and wind. Accommodation options available here are the Bryce Canyon Lodge, which is a historic uh, national historic landmark, and it offers cabin rentals just outside the park. You can also find options in Bryce Canyon City, Tropic, Cannelville, and Henryville, which are just located very close to the park. Summer activities here include camping, hiking, horseback riding, and exploring Bryce Canyon through a guided tour. Uh, the guided tour is available to riders of any uh, experience level. Winter activities include snowing, uh, uh, snowshoeing, skiing, uh, which is available for rental, and photography. The fifth national park is the Zion National Park, which is open year round and is Utah's first national park. It's an hour and a half drive away from Bryce Canyon and just under three hours from Las Vegas. It's very easily combined with, you know, West Coast itineraries ending in Las Vegas uh, with an add on to Zion. Uh, Zion is famous for its hiking trails and the must do here is the family friendly hike uh, at the Emerald Pools or the Weeping Rock for all ages. The unique thing about this park is that it has a shuttle service, uh, which is a perk of visiting this park. Uh, accommodation options include the Zion Ranch Resort or the Zion Mountain Ranch. Both offer glamping, camping, vacation rentals, as well as hotel room options. You also have the Best Western Thunderbird, which is located in Mount Carmel Junction, which is just about 25 minutes away from the park. The landscapes that you've seen so far may feel very familiar to all of you as many Hollywood blockbuster movies have been shot in Utah, such as Mission Impossible, Pirates of the Caribbean, Hulk, NFS, 127 hours and Star Trek. Moving from summer to winter activities, in Utah we have uh, the greatest snow on earth and it is much more than just a great slogan. Our snow is much lighter and drier than most snow because of the Great Salt Lake, which is full of salt, that it takes away moisture from the storms before they hit our mountain ranges, making our snow fluffy, powdery, and amazing for skiing. We also get a lot of snow averaging from 500 inches to 1,200 uh, uh, centimeters per year. Utah gives you the most mountain time since 11 of our ski resorts are located less than an hour from Salt Lake City International Airport. So depending on what you're looking for, uh, whether it's, uh, you know, training in skiing, uh, luxury lodges with high-end dining combined with ski slopes, affordable resorts, family-owned resorts, or kid-friendly resorts where your children can actually learn to ski, you can make a selection depending on what your client has asked for. So we really invite all our visitors to spend more time and explore our national parks, uh, but also we invite them to explore what lies in between the national parks. Uh, so I'm just going to play a short video for you here. This is going to cover our 44 state parks that we have through the entire state. Here in places less known. Between Utah's mighty five national parks, there are moments that surprise you. Between generations and between friends. Somewhere between what you expected and what you never imagined. Start planning at visitutah.com. That was a glimpse of our beautiful state park. 
Utah is also home to the most number of certified dark sky parks than any other state, region, or province in the world. Here's an image of the Cedar Breaks National Monument, which is one of them. Uh, this this monument features parties every Saturday night uh, where you can kind of get uh, some uh, drinks, some food, gather your friends and sit down and gaze at the stars by night uh, while a live concert is on. Uh, there's also fall color tours uh, which can be combined uh, with this attraction. Here's an image of uh, the Southeast uh, Utah Park, which is called the Navajo Tribal Park and is known for the Grand Circle Tour. This is an image just outside of Capitol Reef, uh, where we have new products like the Conestoga Wagons, which is a glamping and luxury option uh, coming on board in Utah. These are also new products. So the, to the top left corner, you see Camp Sarika, which is part of the Amman Resorts. It's just outside of Kanab in southern Utah uh, and contains 10 tented pavilions with five-star services. To see the Advanaya, which is a part of the autograph collection. Oh, Bhavika, your mic is muted. Can you unmute your mic, please? Uh, sorry about that. Uh, so Utah is home to the most number of certified uh, dark sky parks than any other state, region or province in the world. Cedar Breaks National Monument is one of them. Uh, this monument features uh, Saturday night star parties every week with a wildflower festival and live music. So imagine getting together with your friends, bringing some drinks and food and having a stargazing party by night. Here's an image of the Navajo Tribal Park, which is located in uh, southeast Utah. So like I said before, we have 40 four state parks, which is really the maximum number of state parks than any other state in the U.S. Uh, this is the Gooseneck State Park, which is in southern Utah. This is an image just outside of Capitol Reef, uh, where we have new uh, accommodation products like the Conestoga Wagons. Uh, this is a, a glamping and luxury uh, option, accommodation option. So these are three other new products which are coming on board in Utah for your clients, uh, starting with the top left, which is called Camp Sarika. Uh, it's a part of Amman Resorts, just open outside of Kanab. It has 10 tented luxury pavilions with five star service. Uh, bottom left, you see Element by Westin, uh, which is located in Moab. So you can use this property uh, in the future for your clients visiting Archies as well as Canyonlands National Park. It's opening in Jan 2021. And to the right, you see the Advanaya, which is a part of the autograph collection by Marriott. It's a new boutique hotel, uh, which is just 90 minutes away from Las Vegas. Uh, and it's newly opened in Jan 2020. So like I said before, a lot of movies have been shot in Utah. So you definitely relate to the landscape. Uh, here's an image of uh, the Forrest Gump scene and the Westworld classic scene, which has been shot in Utah with Tom Hanks in it. So to summarize, uh, we really have so much to experience. Uh, so take your time and enjoy Utah through a road trip or an adventure uh, tour with your friends or a private family van tour or a millennial self-drive road trip. There's many ways to experience this region. We now have a short video before we end the presentation. You know this road. You've traveled it in your dreams. Artists and adventurers have always traveled here, found their muse, 
in these red canyons. You were made to travel this road. It belongs to you. This is your birthright. For this is the road to mighty. The road begins at visitutah.com. So that's it from me for now. Uh, Rachel is your point of contact for Utah. Uh, she's the director for tourism. So feel free to reach out to her as well for more information. And visitutah.com is the travel trade website where you can find itineraries, experiences, images, and much more. So we are now going to fly from Salt Lake City to California State. And I'm going to hand it over to Christina to take you through the beautiful state of California. Thank you, Bobby. <laughs> Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining in today. We're very excited to kind of run through our destination presentations for you. And uh, while we're doing the presentation, if you have any questions, feel free to write and then I can respond to them post uh, the presentation. So as uh, Bhavika mentioned, uh, we're not very far from Utah and uh, we're on the west coast of the United States and California is one of the most popular states visited by Indians as well as leisure travelers from all over the world and uh, all major international airlines that service India has connectivity into California either one two or three of our major gateways and apart from that in terms of non-stop connectivity we have two direct flights from India one is the Air India Delhi San Francisco flight, which has been in service for a couple of years now. And the second one is the United Airlines Delhi San Francisco uh, direct nonstop flight, which started later in 2019. So it's fairly a new connection. Apart from this, uh, California has over 13 uh, airports, so it is very easy to connect uh, within the state. On the left hand side, you can see our state. California is a very large state. So it's kind of hard to do an entire California itinerary in one trip. Uh, so usually we kind of focus on some more iconic destinations and destinations that will be really enjoyable by Indian visitors. So as you can see, we are divided, uh, the state is divided into 12 regions geographically, just to show you how diverse the state is and how different one region is from the other. As you can see, we have a huge uh, Pacific coastline right, running right from the north coast, coming down to San Francisco Bay Area, Central Coast, running down all the way to San Diego County. So if you're looking for beach experiences and small um, beach towns, you will find that in this uh, part of the state. We have a huge um, desert region. So as you can see, we share the desert with Nevada as well. And we have beautiful destinations within the desert, such as uh, Greater Palm Springs. Our mountain regions we're going to talk a lot about today uh, is all focused uh, towards the High Sierra. That's our popular mountain destinations. And uh, we will run through some destinations within the High Sierra as well. Apart from that, we have four major international gateways, San Francisco and San Jose in the San Francisco Bay Area, which is in the north. And then in the south, we have Los Angeles with the LAX airport and San Diego with the SEN. Uh, airport code. So those are the major, major international uh, gateways. But as I said, apart from this, there are 13 airports within California and you can easily fly within the state as well. So California has amazing experiences. If you want to ask the question, you know, why should I send customers to California or why do people come to California? Number one, we have top theme parks, attractions, family hotels and resorts throughout the state. We have incredible culinary experiences and cuisine from all over the world. Uh, Indian food is never a problem. We have tons of Indian restaurants, if that's something that your clients prefer. California is also the fourth leading producer of wine in the world. And 95% of wine that's produced in the United States comes from the state of California, which means that we have wine countries, uh, vineyards that are spread across the state, and you can always find an experience no matter which part of the state you are in. We also have craft uh, beer craft breweries across the state. In fact, San Diego is our number one uh, hotspot destination if you want to experience uh, breweries and craft beer. And then uh, we also have uh, great experiences when it comes to outdoor adventure. And the state has the highest number of national and state parks uh, in the United States. So we have hiking, biking, trekking, skydiving, water sports, zip lining on the tallest trees in the world, fishing, 
um, and even in the winters, you know, snow activities like snowboarding, skiing, or you know, just exploring the snow mountains and enjoying um, snow mountains in the winters as well. And uh, if you're looking for entertainment, we have that in Galore as well. So if you want nightlife, performing arts, professional sports, and even music festivals, we have that in California. Our music festivals like Coachella, Outside Lands, those are very popular as well. And even smaller destinations uh, are constantly hosting uh, concerts by famous uh, uh, musicians as well. And we will talk about uh, more of those as we come to the destination. And if you're looking for luxury, uh, of course, California is for the high-end uh, luxury travelers. We have luxury hotels and resorts, luxury shopping, uh, spa and wellness centers, Michelin restaurants, and really, really exclusive experiences as well. So how do you connect within uh, California? One, as I mentioned, flying. So you can easily do um, a fly from one city or one destination to the other. We have uh, over 13 airports, so it's very easy. And then locally, if people want to move around, we have Uber, we have Lyft, uh, we have local taxis as well. So it's very easy to do a flying uh, combination. Driving is one of the most preferred. We prefer, uh, I mean, we promote a lot of road trips. California has one of the most beautiful highways um, and roads, and you will you must have heard about uh, highways like Highway 1, which is one of the most iconic uh, coastal drives in the world. So we always recommend people to kind of rent a car and drive on their own. And that's also the easiest way to move around the state and also very uh, economical. And if people don't want to drive, then we also have the trains. The Amtrak uh, is very well connected. So if you want to take the train from one point to the other, uh, you can do that as well. And... Uh, Apart from that, uh, within destinations, for example, if you're in the gateway city of uh, San Francisco, if you don't want to drive or take public transportation, uh, you, you still want to do tours of the wine country or national parks, then there are SIC tour companies that will help you with their, um, with their uh, kind of tours where you can just book uh, even on SIC or even on private basis. They have guides on board and they will take you, uh, you know, to the places that you want to go, do the tours and then bring you back into the city as well. Now we're going to start with uh, the San Francisco Bay Area. So this, because this is one of our major gateways, so uh, it is, in fact, San Francisco is one of the top gateways into North America in general. So if people are doing a U.S. itinerary, uh, it is one of the preferred uh, places where they kind of get in or get out of. So it's very popular. San Francisco, as you can see, the yellow portion, that's a very small city, but the Bay Area is much larger. So destinations like Sausalito, the wine countries of Napa, Sonoma, San Jose, which is Silicon Valley, Berkeley, Oakland, San Mateo, Palo Alto, all these come in the San Francisco Bay Area. So even if you're not staying in the city, there are tons of options around uh, the city of San Francisco as well. San Francisco is a convention city, so sometimes it's harder to get accommodations during conferences. So you can always look at alternate uh, destinations around the city of San Francisco. And uh, there's so many uh, kinds of attractions and activities you can do in the city of San Francisco. Number one, you have the, the cable car, the historic cable car that everyone likes to ride. You have the iconic Golden Gate Bridge. The, the Fisherman's Wharf and Pier 39 are great places to hang out for tourists. Uh, there's a lot of uh, souvenir stores, uh, street performers. You can also take the big cruise from there as well. And uh, of course, uh, no trip is complete without a visit to the uh, Alcatraz Island, which is uh, the prison. So those are some of the uh, iconic attractions. But apart from that, if people want to do things like uh, museums, we have tons of museums. It depends on what kind of uh, interest you have. If you like art, we have the art museum like SF MoMA and De Young. If you have kids, we have the ice cream museum. We also have the Cal Academy of Science, the Exploratorium. So there's tons of things to do as well. And uh, the city, uh, in fact, San Francisco and the, the Bay Area itself is also uh, fantastic for foodies, so people who love eating out and doing culinary tours. Uh, San Francisco has um, the largest collection of three-star Michelin restaurants uh, in the US. So you have tons and tons of uh, 
you know, really nice, unique restaurants. Even uh, there are even Michelin uh, vegetarian restaurants as well that you can explore. And if people like to do shopping, it is a great destination for shopping from high end luxury brands to uh, malls like Westfield. Uh, you even have um, stores like Macy's, your Bloomingdale's. And if people want discount shopping, you can even go to the premium outlets, which is just about tw uh, 50 minutes drive from the city. And if people want to do something more unique, we have also some VIP unique tours like sailing, private yacht events, um, curated wine tours from San Francisco, uh, helicopter tours, uh, you know, just to name a few. Now, from San Francisco, as I mentioned, that's our gateway. We are going to talk about some uh, fewer destinations and how you can connect, like a sample itinerary. So usually people ask me, you know, what what kind of what kind of itinerary is an ideal itinerary in California, or how do I connect the destinations? So we've just taken two case scenarios of an itinerary where you can start from San Francisco, cover the wine countries of Napa, go on to Lake Tahoe. From Lake Tahoe, you can go down to Mammoth Lakes. Lake Tahoe to Mammoth is about two hours drive. Mammoth to Los Angeles or from Mammoth Lakes, you can go down to Death Valley into Las Vegas and end your trip in Los Angeles. And usually we recommend at least two to three nights in one destination because that's um, like a minimum amount of time that you would have to actually experience a destination. Otherwise, you can also do San Francisco, go to Yosemite National Park, which is about three and a half hours drive. From Yosemite, you can come to Monterey, do the coastal drive, the Highway 1 drive, come into Santa Barbara, get into LA, go to San Diego, and then you can go onward to Las Vegas and also finish your trip, or you can kind of fly onwards to another destination as well. So this is just to give you an idea. And we, I'm also sharing this presentation to you post uh this webinar so you'll have all of this content with you as well so in terms of the wine country which is only 50 minutes drive from san francisco it's also within the san francisco bay area it is uh a it is not just a wine country it's a destination in itself there are over 400 wineries in napa and sonoma there are beautiful luxury hotels you can stay in resorts michelin star restaurants uh spas you can do curated wine tours and other outdoor adventure uh, like hot air ballooning, which ends with champagne brunch. You can do golfing. Uh, you can go zip lining in the redwoods, horseback riding. Uh, so there's tons of activities in the wine country as well. And it is not just um, a day trip destination. It is actually a destination that you have to go and stay for at least a night or two. And it's great for couples and honeymooners um, and even younger travelers as well. We then come to the High Sierra, which I mentioned, it's a mountain region. So if you uh, have clients coming to California and they want to explore the mountains of California, you have to send them to the High Sierra region. So in the High Sierra, we're going to focus on uh, basically three destinations. One is Lake Tahoe. I will talk about Lake Tahoe a lot. And then Mammoth Lakes and Yosemite. So Mammoth Lakes uh, will be presented by Michael Lee Kaveri after my California presentation. So she will talk more in depth about Mammoth Lakes as it, as it is a newer destination, but I will talk a little bit more about Lake Tahoe uh, to you. And uh, so our mountains in the, the summers are great. There's a lot of uh, activities, so be it hiking, biking, you know, lake activities, kayaking, all of that. And again, uh, in the winters, they're completely covered in snow and they are world ski resorts uh, where you can come. Uh, there's flights from LA as as well as uh, San Diego and San Francisco. So uh, you can fly directly into the mountains. So fly in 45 minutes, uh, you know, into the mountains and then you can fly out as well. So it's very easy uh, to connect uh, to these destinations. So if you drive from San Francisco to Lake Tahoe, it's about four hours drive. If you take a flight, it will just be about 45 minutes drive. Lake Tahoe's uh, nearest airport is in Reno, that's in Nevada, but it's just about an hour drive uh, from Reno Airport uh, into uh, Lake Tahoe if you're staying uh, in Lake Tahoe. And uh, it is very, Reno Airport is very well connected, which means that you can fly from Vegas to Reno or you can fly from San Francisco or Las Vegas or, or, or sorry, Los Angeles into Reno and then come into South Lake Tahoe. And then there are shuttles that will uh, take you from the airport and drop you to your hotel uh, in Lake Tahoe. There are more than 100 hotels from luxury to boutique to budget properties uh, in, in Lake Tahoe. 
vacation rentals uh, or private home rentals are also very popular in this area if you have families or if you have a small group of friends that are traveling together and you want to save on hotels and spend more time as a close group that's also very possible here and those are very popular you can rent cabins on the beach and there are also rv parks and campsites as well so if people are just you know camping or driving an rv renting which we've seen that you know there are few families now that are renting rvs uh, when they travel to the us so that's also very possible as well so there's tons of choices of uh, accommodation there's lots of fun things to do one of the most popular activity in lake tahoe is the mx uh, mx dixie bay cruise uh, which takes you to the emerald bay and uh, it is one of the purest uh, lakes in the world. And it's about a two hour cruise and it can accommodate up to 300 passengers. So even if you have big groups, uh, you can uh, give them that as a day activity. And you can do a lot of water sports like kayaking, jet skis, uh, paddle boarding as well. There are restaurants and bars, there's spa if you want to pamper yourself and just relax. You can also do some shopping in Heavenly Village and um, and then again in the winters, as we said, uh, Lake Tahoe is home to 15 world-class ski resorts. So it's a great destination to even bring your kids and, you know, teach them some um, snow sports as well. Apart from the outdoors, there's also some nightlife and entertainment. So there are outdoor concerts, uh, a lot of celebrities, uh, you know, famous singers like Lady Gaga, Justin Bieber, Bruno Mars. They, they've been having concerts here and they perform here. So you can always look out for events that are happening within the city. And there are nightclubs. You can do uh, club crawling. There's karaoke nights and casinos as well. So there's a lot of entertainment for people who like to party even when they're in an outdoor destination. With that, we come down now from Lake Tahoe. We come down to the uh, the Central Coast region of California. So this is most popular. I think you'll be more familiar with the Highway 1 route. So when you come from San Francisco, you come down the Monterey, Carmel, Big Sur, uh, come into Solvang, Santa Barbara, and then you come into LA. So this is the popular Highway 1, highway one route with beautiful beaches, hotels, resorts, wine countries. And like I said, it's a great uh, route to follow if you like driving in beautiful uh, roads. Then we come into Los Angeles. In Los Angeles, um, you may be aware of most of the attractions like Universal Studios, Warner Brothers, and you know the beaches and stuff like that. I just want to highlight on uh, three popular uh, destinations. In fact, these are independent cities within the region of Los Angeles. So one is Beverly Hills. The other is Santa Monica and West Hollywood. So these are destinations that you can look out for, uh, where you can put your uh, clients, you can you know, find nice, really nice hotels, um, activities in these areas. So these are very, uh, you know, ideally located as well. So you will not be far from any of the attractions or experiences that you want to do in uh, Los Angeles. And in LA, if you're looking at something new, we have the Malibu Wine Safari, which is not very far from Santa Monica, where you can do a full wine experience. Uh, if you want entertainment, you can look at the listings on the Staples Center. So whether it's a concert, an NBA game, or events that are happening, that will be a great experience for your uh, clients as well. Beverly Hills, as I mentioned, uh, is an independent city. It's a luxury destination, and it's one of the most uh, I think it's one of the most uh, iconic uh, destination when you talk about luxury and it's world famous. Uh, in fact, the zip code of uh, 90210 is the most expensive zip code in the world. So if and if you want to even if you want to really like spot celebrities where when you're in uh, Los Angeles, you have a very high chance uh, to spot a celebrity when you go to Beverly Hills and the top restaurants, uh, you know, uh, celebrity chef restaurants. Uh, luxury shopping as well in this area. And if you stay in Beverly Hills, you really don't need to even get out of the city because there's so much to do within Beverly Hills as well. South of LA, right uh, south of, uh, out of uh, Los Angeles, if you drive 30 minutes, you come into Orange County. And that's where you have uh, top theme parks like Disneyland, Knott's Berry Farm, Medieval Times, Dinner Show, and also destinations uh, beach destinations like Laguna, Huntington, and Newport. A lot of times people think this area is under Los Angeles, but it is not. It's just right outside Los Angeles and it's under Orange County. So if you have families traveling together and you want to do the iconic family attractions, this is the region that you would look at, the Orange County region. 
And then with that, we come to the southernmost part of uh, California, which is San Diego. San Diego borders Mexico, so there's a huge Mexican uh, influence in San Diego. And uh, in fact, this is one of my most favorite destination. I know a lot of uh, travel companies in India still see San Di Diego as a day trip destination, but it really isn't. It is one of the most beautiful destinations. It is one of the largest cities in California. Beautiful weather, beaches. Uh, the beaches are just like mind blowing. So, and there's tons of luxury hotels, uh, mid-level hotels, uh, shopping. They have some of the, I think the most number of uh, premium outlets within uh, San Diego region and uh, big premium outlets, you know, not the smaller ones. And you can do a lot of outdoor adventure here, like um, hot air ballooning, sailing, kayaking, uh, you know, driving is great. The, just, the city is just beautiful. You can see the water all, most of the time. So it's, uh, that's a lot of fun. And you can do kayaking, you can go to the sea caves. See, there's a lot of things to do. And we usually recommend San Diego for families, couples and honeymooners as well. Families, because we have award-winning zoos like the Safari Park and the San Diego Zoo. We also have SeaWorld, USS Midway Museum, and we have a lot of other museums as well. So it's a must include in your itinerary. So if you see on the map, you can see San Diego. I spoke about Anaheim and LA. Just north of uh, San Diego is Palm Springs. That's in the desert, in our beautiful desert region. So Palm Springs is an oasis in the desert. It's about uh, two hours drive uh, from LA and two hours drive from San Diego. And um, this is, again, another luxury destination, a great destination to get away from the city. Two hours away from LA or San Diego, you can be in the desert. You, uh, you can rent a vacation home, which is very popular. Golf spa is very popular here, shopping. We also have the highest rotating tram car in the world, which is the aerial tramway. And um, a great recommendation when you're in uh, Southern California. And like I said, even in the desert, we have so much of desert adventure. It's hard to talk about all, but I've listed some of them so you can have a look at it. Uh, there's uh, beautiful hotels with pools. There's pool parties happening all the time. You can do hammer tours, uh, aerial tram tramway, night tours. Uh, you know, you can play golf in the dark. So there's tons of options there as well. And then I've listed some of our uh, uh, the, the websites that we own. So one is our uh, Visit California uh, website, which is visitcalifornia.in. It's uh, localized for India market, so you'll have a lot of content there, which is always updated. We also have a Facebook page, so you can follow us on Facebook to get some uh, inspiration on a regular. And apart from that, we have an online training program called uh, California Star. So you can go to star.visitcalifornia.com slash in and get yourself certified, and you can become a California Star. And uh, just to sum it up, uh, California is a land of abundance. And in fact, we're very spoiled in California because we have so much to offer. So we invite you guys to come get spoiled with us in California. Some say we're a little spoiled in California. But it isn't our fault. Nope. We didn't make all this. We're in awe, too. We get a little starstruck. Did you see who's here? What? Sometimes we have to pinch ourselves. To make sure it's real. Smoothie? Oh, this is real. I think it's a wig. Still think we're spoiled? Come visit. It might take your breath away, too. Start your trip at visitcalifornia.com. So, so before we go ahead with the next uh, presenter, I'd like to encourage you to take part in the polls. I see a lot, lot of people have gone to the polls and have put in their answers. Please uh, click on the polls and answer because it will help us to know what's going to happen in the future. Also, I see a lot of questions uh, coming in in the Q&A section. And I'm sure our, our, our presenters will be there promptly to answer you. Thank you, Bhavika. Thanks, uh, Sheldon and Christina. So we're now going to move over to Mammoth Lakes uh, in the state of California. And we have Kaveri, who's going to take you through the destination. Uh, thank you for joining in today's webinar, everybody. And welcome to the journey of Mammoth Lakes with me, Kaveri. Uh, well, Mammoth Lake is a mountain destination in California. It is located in the High Sierra Mountains, uh, which is High Sierra region. 
to be precise it is located in the east central region of mono county so through my presentation today i will touch upon the transportation that one could use for various attractions also it's very easy to travel in and around mammoth lakes also through my presentation i will be sharing with you some fun facts to make this presentation a little more interesting so i'll begin with this beautiful picture of mammoth lakes basin it is very popular for its magnificent mountains beautiful lakes natural scenery wildlife and of course outdoor adventure because mammoth lake is an outdoor destination so not only that here you can fitness glacier covered lakes as well here i recommend taking the free lakes basin trolley as it takes you past the five lakes of the region so basically it's a mode of transportation that you can use to cover your mammoth lakes basin area moving on to the connectivity or how do we get to mammoth lakes well it's very easy very convenient as it is close to the gateway destination like san francisco and la so moving on to the distance or i would say uh, traveling time it takes about 5 hours drive from sa sf la and vegas in fact uh, as you can see on the screen all these three locations are almost equal distance uh, from mammoth lakes uh, apart from that if you come further down uh, you can travel to death valley national park which is about 3 hours drive from mammoth lakes and for those who want to travel by flight we do have an airport which is mammoth yosemite airport again located very conveniently just 12 minutes from the town and we have direct flight services from san francisco la burbank and san diego apart from that i mean besides that we have uh, dozens of connections from all across the united states so you can either pick self drive itineraries or chauffeur driven cars or you you can make your clients fly to mammoth lakes as i mentioned about self drive itineraries well it's a great destination uh, that could be included and as the drives are extremely scenic it's very well connected to the gateway destinations as well and this can easily be included with the yosemite national park and lake tahoe so uh, talking about the traveling time again uh, from lake tahoe it's approximately 2 hours drive to use, uh, to mammoth lakes and from yosemite it's about say 1 hour drive well uh, a lot of people ask us which season is best to visit mammoth lakes and you know what i always say that it really depends what your clients are looking for i believe everybody should visit mammoth lakes in each season to find the difference but to make it easier for you i will talk about these seasons in detail so talking about the winters first uh, winter brings a lot of snow so it's heaven for all the uh, snow lovers or winter activities lovers be it skiing snowboarding or say other activities in fact it's one of the top ski destinations in the world moving on to summers weather is absolutely amazing and it is also peak travel time so one can do a lot of summer activities in summer well people also claim fall to be the best season so uh, so that one can do summer activities one can experience spectacular fall colors or with lesser visitors as well hence i would say that it's a near round destination and it really depends what your clients are looking for Now moving on to the activities attractions and key experiences that one can indulge in Mammoth Lakes I'll begin with hiking first as we have more than 100 different trails from flat to difficult so it's a great uh, outdoor fun for families and kids who are looking for outdoor adventure and the most popular hiking options are Mammoth Lakes Basin uh, Mammoth Mountain and of course Red's Meadow in fact I would like to recommend hiking to Rainbow Falls So just to share with you one fun fact here if you have if you want to have best experience of rainbow falls then hike during the midday will when the sun is at its highest so that you experience uh, all together a different feel of rainbow falls in mammoth lakes uh, we have more than 100 streams and lakes which makes fishing quite a popular acti activity here and i keep on asking people why do you think it is called mammoth lakes and not mammoth lake that's the reason i mean we have more than 100 lakes and streams in mammoth lakes in mammoth lakes uh, you can also do a lot of water sports activities as well so you can either say rent a boat or a kayak or a fish boat or uh, to experience the beautiful scenery and of course the wildlife around moving on to my favorite attraction gondola ride 
Well, this is a cable car ride, and it's a must-do activity because of two reasons. One, uh, to experience and witness the beauty of High Sierra Mountains is the must-have experience. Second, uh, because it has highest lift access in California, and it's open throughout the year, so you can include this in winter as well as summer itineraries. Well, we also recommend exploring the natural beauty of Mammoth Lakes. I'm sorry about that. We also recommend exploring the natural beauty of Mammoth Lakes while biking. Well, uh, you can make it easy for your clients uh, because you can give them an option to rent electric bicycles. Uh, it's a great fun and activity for people who love outdoor adventure, especially for couples, honeymooners, millennials, adventure seekers, and families with kids. This is uh, one interesting slide. Uh, so uh, as I said, I recommend Mammoth Lakes or I recommend biking in Mammoth Lakes. This is because Mammoth Lake is ranked number one mountain biking park in the world, which I believe just makes it imperative to experience the biking trails. The mountain biking trails are easily accessed by gondola cable ride, which, just, which I just talked about in my previous slide. And they're also host to the USA national championships. Mammoth Lakes hosts biking events every year. So in fact, if I talk about last year, last year in September, they celebrated Mammoth Lakes Bike Month Festival. So, you know, throughout the month, visitors participated in those events and festivals. And there were a lot of biking trails which were family friendly as well. These are uh, top two attractions that we have in Mammoth Lakes, Mono Lake and Buri State Parks. Well, if your clients are daring enough, you can make them visit Bori Ghost Town, which is a real abandoned mining town in California. And this is uh, the official uh, ghost town in California as well. Also about Mono Lake, well, it's a million years old lake, beautiful lake. And one of the most unique features of Mono Lake is its two four towers. So a uh, fun fact here again, do you want to go to moon? Uh, then you must visit two four towers as they look like moon rock. Well, this is my favorite slide somehow. And Mammoth Lake is located just an hour drive from Yosemite National Park. And you know, this proximity has its own advantage. To just to quote two, three, in summers, finding accommodation in the park could be quite challenging. So you can always keep Mammoth Lakes as a perfect base to explore the park. Second, in summers, it could get really hot in the park. So you could bring your clients to Mammoth Lakes and you know, they can, uh, enjoy altogether different weather as it's a mountain destination. Third, your clients can also experience the city's nightlife, restaurants after a day of adventure at the park, or they can just head to a lot of spa resorts that we have in Mammoth Lakes. Now, how do we commute between Yosemite National Park and Mammoth Lakes? Well, it's very accessible uh, if you have a group going who's traveling by coach, or maybe say people who are driving, then you can always suggest them to take uh, the route, which is Tioga Pass. Apart from that, we do have public transportation services available as well. So one is YARTS, which is Y-A-R-T-S. So yes, this is a public transportation system, which has uh, which takes you to Yosemite National Park from Mammoth Lakes. And of course, has a lot of uh, drop points and pickup points at both these locations. So it's a very, very convenient way to travel uh, between both these destinations. As I said, we are an outdoor destination and we get a lot of snow. So we get snow somewhere around November end and it stays until April end. And winters is totally heaven for snow lovers. One can do skiing, snowboarding. If your clients are not really looking for, say, skiing, then might as well they can look for some other fun activities, be it snow cat tours, sleigh rides, ice skating, and other soft adventure uh, with regards to snow, of course. This is also a very interesting slide. So Mammoth Mountain is the official training mountain for the US Olympic team. That's how Mammoth Mountain is popular for. Also, as you can read on your screen right now about the Icon Pass. So let me just tell you uh, what this pass is all about. So this is a multi-resort skiing and snowboarding uh, season pass that allows you to ski wherever you want, whenever you want, with limited restrictions. 
so that's the advantage of uh, this pass and you know you can always recommend this to all your clients who are specifically or primarily looking for winter or snow activities in mammoth lakes If you're wondering, we are only popular for the outdoor adventure, then that's not really true. I mean, we have base village area, which has shops, restaurants, as well as nightlife. So there's plenty to do after a day of adventure. This is a picture of base village area itself. Uh, well, there are plenty of accommodations as well. So if your clients are looking for, say, luxury accommodation or budget properties, uh, vacation rentals, private homes, we have all such properties available in Mammoth Lakes. The highest category room that we have is at the Hotel Westin. Uh, well, for somebody who's visiting Mammoth Lakes just for winter sports, uh, then I would like to recommend ski in and out condos. So I'll tell you what ski in and out condos are. So basically, uh, these are houses which are located right on the mountain so that people save their time uh, to uh, go to the ski resort. So it's right nearby to the ski resort. Apart from that, uh, in summer, there are a lot of music, crab beer, food, wine, festival, which happens almost every weekend. So you can integrate these festivals uh, in your clients' itineraries uh, to bring in the local element as well. Well, in case uh, these are my contact details, in case you have any query, please feel free to get in touch with me. Also, uh, you can visit our website, uh, visitmammoth.com. Apart from that, we do have an image gallery. So in case you need any picture, destination pictures, please feel free to reach out to us. And uh, now we will take you through the wonderland of Mammoth Lakes with a short destination video. Thank you so much for listening uh, uh, to me. And now we will move on to the city of Philadelphia. And my colleague Dira will take you over the city of Philadelphia. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. I, I hope I'm clearly audible. Uh, welcome to the East Coast, everybody, and uh, welcome to the city of Philadelphia. Uh, my name is Deera Majumdar Mitra, and I'm the Senior Account Manager India for Philadelphia Convention and Visitors Bureau, one of the oldest cities in the United States. Philadelphia has an authenticity which is very, very hard to replicate. 
and with new hotel openings, boutique and global brands coming up, innovative dining options, popular attractions and a lot of tax free shopping. There is so much more to experience for every visitor in Philadelphia. So getting into Philadelphia is extremely easy uh, because uh, no matter where you're coming from and we'll have a look at that. Philadelphia boasts over strong overseas visitation numbers, and this is well supported by several air connectivity options into the Philadelphia International Airport. Uh, as And the airport always ensures that visitors have a very uh, sort of friendly, effect, efficient, and hassle-free experience when they arrive or depart from Philadelphia. Some of the uh, we offer a lot of non-stop services from 38 international cities because uh, Philadelphia International Airport is the hub for America, uh, American Airlines and uh, some of the other uh, international carriers offering connections into Philadelphia are uh, British Airways, Qatar and Lufthansa. The Philadelphia International Airport also has the shortest customs uh, wait times on the East Coast and the Center City District is less than 30 minutes of a train or a car ride uh, from the airport. Uh, so the shorter wait times ideally means that you're spending lesser time at the airport and more time exploring and experiencing Philadelphia as a city. You can also opt for Amtrak connections. So uh, approximately it takes about an hour and a 15 minutes uh, to connect from New York City into Philadelphia and about an hour 40 minutes to connect from Washington, D.C. As you see on your screens from the map here, Philadelphia is broken into uh, various districts, such as uh, the historic district, um, the convention district, the museum district, and river to river, it takes about 45 minutes of a walk from one side of the city to the other. Hence, Philadelphia is also a very, very walkable city. Um, throughout history until today, Philadelphia has been the city of firsts. Some of the few notables are uh, Philadelphia Zoo was the first zoo in America. The Philadelphia is was also the city with the first July 4th event and the first Thanksgiving parade. In fact, Philadelphia was also the city with the first international style skyscraper to be launched in the United States and that today is proudly the Lowe's Philadelphia Hotel uh, and this was also the building which was the totally uh, first totally air-conditioned building in America but I might say everything don't go by my words because Philadelphia is uh, should be on the top of every travelers list is what the National Geographic Traveler magazine says now, uh, and that is why it is named Philadelphia as the only city in the United States for their top 25 best trips for 2020. Um, and let's see a, a video to explore why.
So now that you have a brief glimpse into what uh, Philadelphia looks like, let's see how we can really develop Philadelphia tours for your clients. Philadelphia is full of experts who are eager to show you around. Hence, you can do really, really different thematic tours from the classics to the quirky uh, food tours and ghost hunting. Let's explore some of them with us. So the first, of course, will be the Philadelphia that you know or should know. This is what Philadelphia, every traveler should be experiencing and exploring in Philadelphia. Well, you begin with the history because Philadelphia is the birthplace of America, which is why there is a lot of history to choose from. The first is the Independence National Historic Park. And you also get to visit the UNESCO World Heritage Site, which is the Independence Hall. See, uh, where America, so you can see where America's founders signed the Declaration of Independence. And please note that all the attractions within the Independence Historic Park have free admission. Second up is uh, the American Museum of American Revolution, which is the only museum in the country that solely focuses on the Revolutionary War through interactive exhibits. And one of the most notable artifacts in the museum is George Washington's original war tent. The third uh, related to history again is uh, the National Constitution Center, which dramatically tells you a story of America's constitution from revolutionary times to the present date as well. And if you're done with all the history, let's hop on uh, to a Philadelphia sightseeing tours bus that provides some of the best views of downtown attractions. A 24 and 48 hour uh, hop on hop off passes are available, which provide visitors the chance to see it all with different with 27 different stops as well. Or if you're short on time, just choose an experience uh, to experience Philadelphia from the top of the modern double decker bus by the big bus tours. Listen to entertaining stories by professional tour guides who bring the old and new of Philadelphia, very, uh, 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 make it very alive for you with a 90 minute fully narrated sightseeing tour. So the Philadelphia Museum uh, of Art is where you have the whole art scene of Philadelphia really beginning. But it is not just limited to exploring the art. We also have the um, the rocky steps located there. So try uh, arriving at the museum by running the 72 steps, just like the iconic movie character Rocky. And then you also have uh, the Robert Indiana's Love Sculpture, which is located at the Love Park. And this is a must do selfie spot in the city. And for the foodies, there's so much, so much to try for. And you must begin this journey with the Philadelphia cheesesteak. So when you're in South of Philly, head to the cheesesteak Mecca, Pats or Geno's, where you get one from each and compare because that is one of the favorite hobby of every Philadelphia local. Second itinerary to develop is uh, a family friendly one. So let's see what are the activities that can be interesting for families uh, in an itinerary. First up is uh, the Adventure Aquarium. So here's where you can explore one of a kind exhibits with 8,500 aquatic animals. And this museum also has the largest collection of sharks on the East Coast. Second is the Philadelphia Zoo. Remember I told you that the Philadelphia Zoo is America's first zoo. So this is what you can experience at the Fairmount Park neighborhood. And we also have a unique thing called Zoo 360, which is a network of elevated pathways where lions, apes, and more animals can roam around freely in the park for you to interact with them. And the most important attraction is uh, the Please Touch Museum. So uh, this is one of the best uh, children's museum in the United States, where you can let your child discover the power of learning through creativity, collaboration, communication, and creative uh, critical thinking. Philadelphia is also home to 4,000 murals, which is why it is called the mural capital of the world. You can experience all these murals through self-guided or guide-led tours around the year. 
and you can experience 360 degree panoramic views of Philadelphia at the One Liberty Observation Deck. In fact, uh, this is also a great option for after hours uh, experiences because uh, great activities to do at night at the One Liberty Observation Deck as well. So for people who really want out of the box tour, something extraordinary, there is so much that Philadelphia offers for your surprise and delight as well. First up is uh, the Philade uh, is the Simeon Automotive Museum, where you can check the world's largest collection of racing sports cars. So every sports uh, aficionado must really visit this place because it has 65 historically significant cars from your Ferraris, Alfa Romeos, Bentleys, Aston Martins and much more. And then we have the Magic Gardens, which is an immersive outdoor art installation and indoor galleries of mosaics with made completely out of non-traditional materials. So it's, you know, it's something which is very fascinating for people across age groups. For people who like the really creepy and oddities uh, in their itinerary, the Muta Museum is a must because this is a museum on medical marvels. In fact, there's a slice of Albert Einstein's brain as well on display at this museum. And then we have the Eastern State Penitentiary, which is one of the most unexpected and intriguing historical attractions. In fact, the infamous Alcatraz prison in San Francisco is actually designed after this prison. And this is also where the American gangster Al Capone was kept for a short while as well. In Philadelphia, you can also experience the Philadelphia Opera at the Kimmel Center of Performing Arts in the summertime as well. And there are lots of movie tours because not just Rocky, there are also popular Hollywood films like the Silver Linings Playbook, uh, uh, which was shot in Philadelphia. So explore all of these movie locations, ideal for uh, movie buffs to be exploring these with private tours organized by Yo Philly Rocky Film Tour Company. And we also have a lot of uh, baseball and basketball games that you can explore while you are in Philadelphia. Lots of eating options. So uh, everything from sandwiches to fry foie gras. In fact, Philadelphia is known a lot for its local flavors and is a melting pot of global cuisines as well. There are several Indian restaurants also located in Philadelphia. And we have a thousand different restaurants plus 400 open uh, outdoor cafes all located in the center city of uh, Philadelphia also. The Reading Terminal Market is the ultimate uh, foodie experience, which offers great number of tour offerings. And this is great for any kind of foodie trips to be included because this is the original farmer's market in America. Great nightlife options in Philadelphia. So uh, you can try everything from beer gardens to casinos to laughing at a comedy club or just having some dazzling performances or just enjoying your own drink by yourself. So one of the most exciting things in Philadelphia is uh, the uh, it is called the best beer drinking cities in the United States. And one of the uh, reasons why it has found this reputation is because of the famous Tipplers tour that takes place from May until December. So great thing to add in the itinerary. And this tour starts at the Independence uh, Hall District as well. Lots of nightlife options, great nightclubs in the city for people to explore from. One of the top most attractions is the Cherry Street Pier, which is the newest nightlife hotspots. And it offers a lot of indoor and outdoor experiences with stunning views of the Benjamin Franklin Bridge. Tax-free shopping, yay. Yes, uh, definitely pack an extra suitcase if you're coming into Philadelphia because tax-free shopping on clothes and shoes, with that, you're definitely likely to leave with more than what you came for. 
and the Macy's uh, also offers 10% additional discounts on every international traveler. You only need to show your passport at checkout as, uh, to them. The Philadelphia Fashion District is the brand new addition into the city, which offers three city blocks full of major retailers to outlet shopping from your Century 21, Nike, Alta, all of these, plus a lot of entertainment, dining and uh, live concert options for the family as well. And in addition to the Philadelphia itinerary is the countryside because going forth, people will be looking a lot at lesser crowded cities and more social distancing. So the countryside becomes ideal uh, because this is called America's garden capital with over 30 different gardens and the outlet shopping malls are located in the countryside as well. This is more of a driving destination, which has lots of breweries, uh, wineries and distilleries in the region as well. Philadelphia, like I mentioned, has a lot of hotel options. So 12,000 guest rooms available within the city from two star to five star options suitable for all budgets and preferences. In fact, if you see on your screen right here, our hotel inventory is increasing by the time. So the green spots that you see are all the hotels that are located in the city. And the orange ones that you see are all the attractions. So what we're trying to show you with this map is that uh, you are always uh, in the center. When you're placed in the center city hotels, most attractions are within walking distance for you and your uh, family to explore. Some of our newest properties are the Four Seasons, which is located on the newest 60-story Comcast Center. And imagine the hotel lobby is on the 60th floor of this building. So imagine the views of the city that you can get from the hotel lobby of the Four Seasons Philadelphia. The Sofitel Philadelphia is also recently refurbished in April 2019. So uh, and completely new set of rooms available out here. We will have the W Philadelphia open in in uh, the early next year as well, along with the Elements Hotel. So lots and lots of new properties and great accommodation options coming in for us. Um, for travel inspiration ideas, we have uh, the Philadelphia uh, uh, International Visitor's Guide book that uh, offers a lot of these itineraries that I mentioned to you about. And uh, you can use these for inspiration. And these are all logistically making sense itineraries because that's how we have sort of designed the entire guidebook as well. So this will be available for you to uh, download as well. And you can use access it at your own pace. So thank you for listening in. Uh, we hope that you will uh, visit Philadelphia soon. Until then, take care, stay safe, and uh, keep dreaming about Philadelphia. Thank you very much. And over to Bhavika. Thank you, Zira. So uh, guys, we've come to the end of today's webinar. I know it's been a really informative educational session for every one of you. Thank you so much for the feedback that you've given. Uh, I'm just going to take you through some of the travel trade tools that we as Brand USA, the official destination uh, marketing organization have. Uh, this is a travel trade website. You can access a lot of uh, images, videos, uh, itineraries, uh, as well as DMC details here. So please do visit it. And we have an online training program which covers all the 50 states, uh, the five territories, as well as our capital. It's called the USA Discovery Program. So currently, we have 48 different uh, badges that you can choose to do. So right from experiential badges, uh, you know, to explore more about national parks, winter sports, uh, food and drink, to uh, regional and city badges. Like we have one for Philadelphia. We have one for uh, Lake Tahoe, Mammoth Lakes, uh, New Orleans, and a lot more. And I'm really, really excited. Uh, today, I'm launching this new contest on the webinar. So everyone's going to get an email by about 4.30 today. So we're doing uh, the second round of the Double the Marker contest. So all you need to do is complete any 10 badges uh, on our, uh, out of the 48 available on our website. Uh, send us an email with the badges and a photo of an iconic American personality that you really love and how they inspire you. Uh, to enter into this contest, and you can stand a chance to win wireless earphones from JBL, um, which are really, really cool. I personally use them myself.
We'll be sending you the contest information in our thank you email as well. Uh, we have the Go USA TV, which is an online free video streaming app. It's currently available for free on the App Store uh, on I for iPhones as well as Android, and it's also available on the Amazon Fire TV. We're doing a short webinar on the 11th of June at 3 p.m., which is going to take you through the uses of Go USA TV and applications to business because we really have a lot of great content on it. So please do register for that. Uh, so that's really it from my end, uh, and thank you to all the presenters uh, today for uh, coming in. Uh, we'll also be sending a follow-up email with the presentation PDF, a feedback form, uh, the webinar recording, sample itineraries, trade websites for all destinations, as well as our online training program information. We'll also include uh, the Double the Marker contest information there for you, so please, please do register and participate in the contest. Uh, and I, I believe we've answered most of the questions that we've received and we've published them for your viewing. Uh, please feel free to write in to us directly as well. We'll be sharing our personal uh, email addresses with you. And with that, I'd like to pass it over to Sheldon. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, th thank you very much. Uh, you'll have all been extremely patient in uh, listening to all of this. We've actually, uh, this is probably one of our longest. We've, uh, we've been here almost one and a half hour and I don't see anyone too, too many drop out. I, I hope this was in, informative enough. I know our presenters have actually taken time out and answered most of your questions in real time. If there were any of your questions that were still unanswered, please feel free, free to write into any one of them. Uh, also, thank you for your whole wholehearted uh, uh, contribution in the polls. I, I can see more than 300 or 400 people have actually gone in and answered the polls. So th thank you very much for your par participation there. And uh, once again, we look forward to seeing you at our next webinar on, on 11th of June. And there's another one, I think, also on the 3rd of June, which we'll keep you posted on. Thank you for your time. Stay safe and, and see you all soon. Bye-bye.